How do you do? Fear is the quicksand of life, offering nothing to hold on to, dragging down even the hope of change. Deathly fear. The woman in this story battled the dread of death for years because of events in her childhood. She had to become as a little child again before her heart and mind and very life, including her fears, were unshackled. Mm, I'm hungry. What's for supper? Meatloaf, but it was done an hour ago. Probably dried out by now. I'll eat it anyway. Where were you? I had a chance to work overtime. And we need the money, so I did. Hey, where's the kids? Sophie's playing in her room. But Jenny's been sick all day. Uh, what's wrong with her? Oh, I don't know. She's had a fever. I'd better go check on her. I can get the doctor if we need to. She's not moving, Dean. She's not breathing. She's dead. My little girl is dead. This is Unshackled, the longest-running radio drama in history, produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Our country was barely 100 years old when George and Sarah Clark first opened their little storefront mission in Chicago's Skid Row in 1877. That mission grew to become Pacific Garden Mission, where today hundreds of men, women, and children find refuge and hope. Thanks to caring friends who send financial gifts, the old lighthouse offers food, fresh clothing, and a safe place to sleep, all without charge to the homeless. These destitute ones also hear from pastors and counselors who share the good news of the one who sticks closer than a brother, which is what this program celebrates. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number 3,822 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. The woman in our story was seven years old when death struck her family, taking her four-year-old sister. They lived in a coal mining town of Pennsylvania, but from then on, she lived in fear. This is the story of how that affected her life. It's the true testimony of a woman called Sophie from the classic files of Unshackled. I remember asking Mama why my sister died, and she said something about God. So then I knew. If God took away little sisters, he must be very cruel because Mama cried a lot, and he might come and get me too. I prayed, asking him not to take me away. A year later, when I was eight, my mother also died, and I knew that God had taken her. So then I was sure he hated me. The neighbors came to help before the funeral. The children are clean and dressed, Dean. Ready to go. Thank you for coming over to help. My privilege. Their mother was a fine woman. I never knew a finer one. Sophie, are you remembering to pray for God to help you? I wish I knew why God had to take her away from us. I thought at the time if Mama was a fine woman, then there wasn't any hope at all for me if I died. My tears at the funeral were as much for me as for the loss of my mother. Not long after that, death struck again, this time taking my brother. That proved without a doubt that God was capricious and cruel, someone to be placated. So in my early teens, I spent hours in church. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Oh God, I tried to be good today. Please forgive me if I said or did anything to upset you. Help me, God, to know your will. No matter how long or diligently I prayed, I never had peace of mind. It would be many years before I'd realized that religion couldn't give me peace. I was 14 when I met Nick. Been to church again? Yes. I go every day after school to pray. 
You must have a stack of brownie points with God. Don't be disrespectful, Nick. Sure, sure. What else do you do, Sophie? Go to class, go home. Do you date? Not yet. Why not? I'm not sure that God wants me to. Of course he does. Didn't he create marriage in the family? I guess you're right. How about going to a movie with me sometime? Nick's gentle nature was good for me, and we dated for four years while I finished high school. But all during that time, I was afraid of doing something to make God angry with me, and every step I took generated fear, apprehension of making a wrong move. Sophie, let's get married. I love you, Nick, but I can never marry you. Why not? It's hard to explain. You wouldn't understand. Try me. If I married you, God wouldn't like it. I'd probably die. That's crazy. I knew you wouldn't understand. Why would you die? Your family's a different nationality from mine. You even have a different church. God would never forgive me for marrying you. <laughs> I've heard everything. Maybe if you come over to my church... Who's going to be the man in the family anyway? It's the only way, Nick. With Nick, it was a matter of pride. With me, it was fear. And because my fear was greater than his pride, he gave in and joined my church. We married, and for a while, being a new bride with a new home eased my fears. I almost forgot about death. Then, I got pregnant and had nine months to dwell on all the things that could go wrong. Uh, what, 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 what's wrong, honey? What's wrong? It's time, Nick. We better get to the hospital. Let's go, then. What are you waiting for? I'm scared. Scared? What if something goes wrong? Nothing's gonna go wrong. Babies are born every day and ours will be fine. What about me? What if I die? You won't die, Sophie. You're just excited. You're all worked up. Uh, you should talk. You're the one putting your clothes on over your pajamas. Uh, okay, okay. Maybe I'm a little excited, but this is the first one after all. Maybe the last one, too. Stop. Stop talking like that. You're being morbid. I can't help it, Nick. I'm really scared of dying. I have a terrible premonition. Nick says I trembled all the way to the hospital. By the time we arrived, I had passed on my distress to him. Fear is contagious, and I was a carrier. A carrier of deathly fear. Our baby was born without a hitch, but the dread in my heart remained and touched every phase of our lives, like a blight. Isn't she a beauty, honey? She couldn't be anything less with you as the father. No, no. She takes after you. I hope not. Sophie! Are you happy, Nick? Of course. Who wouldn't be? We've got to be careful, though. Naturally. I don't mean average careful. I mean very careful. we got to watch her every minute. Babies can die suddenly, and I don't want anything to happen to her. Nothing will. Nothing could happen to her. She's as healthy as they come. I know, but maybe we're too happy. Maybe God... Maybe God what? Maybe he doesn't want people to be this happy. When you love someone too much, he takes them away. That's just crazy, Sophie. Don't talk like that. Don't even think it. But it's true. I saw it happen. My little sister, my mother, my brother. Please, Sophie, don't. You see what I mean? My fears touched everything in our lives. Not just at home, either. All our friends knew that I was terrified of death. One night, a bunch of us planned a big evening out, with good food, drinking, and dancing. So Nick and I hired a babysitter. Having a good time, honey? I'm having a wonderful time, Nick. We should go out more often. I knew you'd be glad you came. Hey, look at sad Sophie. She's relaxed and smiling for a change. Please don't ever call me sad Sophie again. <laughs> I won't. It does my heart good to see you like this, Soph? Come on, honey. Let's dance. I danced until I was tired. Then I went back to the table, ordered a drink, and watched others. I sat there contentedly thinking this is the way life ought to be all the time. Then, suddenly, all the old fears rushed into my head. All the old questions bombarded me. 
What if you died right now? What would happen to you? Where would you go? You are going to die, you know. What then? Do you know? What then? God, you're cruel. So cruel. I came here to have a good time, and you remind me of death. I came here to forget, and you won't let me. I wrongly attributed to God that which had come from Satan, an angel of light. As thoughts of death so often taunted me, I sat staring at my untouched drink, asking myself the same old questions. Why me? Why was I the only one distressed about death? Others didn't worry, and they never talked about it. They had a good time, and the dark shadow never seemed to fall across their paths. Or their faces. <laughs> they laughed easily, any time at all. They weren't afraid. Or did they sometimes laugh too much over something that really wasn't funny? Maybe other people were afraid too. But they put on a front, laughing even when their hearts were as cold as mine at the thought of death. <laughs> oh, why, Sophie? What are you doing sitting here like a bump on a log? Don't you like the music? I just got tired. It's okay to sit down and rest, but you don't have to die completely. Don't say that. I'm not dying. You sure look like it. Snap out of it, girl. Finish your drink. I don't think I want it. Oh, for Pete's sake. Do you have to be a killjoy? We take you places for a good time, and then you spoil our fun by sitting around looking like the chief mourner at your own funeral. Stop it! I hope you don't start talking about gloomy things. I say, eat, drink, and be merry. Tomorrow we may die. <laughs> As I went home from the party, sad and a little ashamed of being a wet blanket, I didn't suspect that things would abruptly change. That night marked the end of a phase of my life. A new one was about to begin. We'll hear about those changes very shortly. But first, a message about the people who come through the doors of Pacific Garden Mission who carry with them a lot of burdens. One of the greatest is addiction. Our New Day program not only helps others find immediate relief from drugs and alcohol, it teaches them how to avoid falling back into the temptation. No life is beyond redemption. One life at a time, Pacific Garden Mission is making a difference in a world that seems indifferent to the pain and heartache so many endure. We serve others in this way because we know our Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. To find out more about our ministry, visit our website at pgm.org. I couldn't sleep at all after coming home from the party. Too upset. The next morning, still tired and disheartened, I turned on the radio to keep my mind from dwelling on the questions that haunted me. A religious program was on, something that didn't interest me, but I let it alone and moved away to clean another room. Later, I returned. Answer me this, honestly now. Wouldn't you like to go to heaven? Well, wouldn't you? What's your answer? What kind of question is that? Everyone wants to go to heaven. But how can you know for sure that you will? I began arguing with the radio preacher as if he could hear me talking to him. For a minute or two, it seemed as if he could hear because he seemed to answer my questions. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. What did you say? His name is the Lord Jesus Christ, name above all names. He gave his life for you on the cross, so you could spend eternity in heaven with him. God wouldn't accept someone like me in heaven. God is no respecter of persons. You can be saved. Yes, even you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Saved? Did you hear that? 
The Word was saved. Saved from God's holy judgment and condemnation of sin. Because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means all of us. But God made a way for us. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That means there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Pray tell, how do I do that? Believe. Only believe, dear listener. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Each morning, for three days in a row, I listened to that man. And some of his words flashed at me so clearly that I can still remember exactly how he said them. If you're sick, you need a doctor. If you're sinful, you need a savior. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. You see, when God forgives, he also forgets because he has put our sins as far from us as the East is from the West. In fact, when we believe in him as Savior, he replaces our sin with his righteousness. Now you know why God calls this the gospel, the good news. The cross was a divine transfer, your sin for his holiness. If this is true, it's the best good news in the world. Oh God, let it be true. Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Each morning I listened, and each morning I prayed, asking Jesus to come into my heart and save me. When the program ended on the third day, I walked across the yard to see my neighbor, who was hanging laundry on the clothesline. Hi, Sophie. Missy, I just have to talk to somebody, and I guess you're it. That's funny. I've been thinking about you for three days, wanting to talk to you. You have? Sophie, don't be angry about my asking, but have you ever invited the Lord Jesus to come into your heart? You're kidding. I said don't be angry. I'm not angry. Astonished is more like it. Why? Because I've been asking the Lord to do exactly that for the last three days. The same three days you've been wanting to talk to me about it. But why keep asking him to do it again and again? I want to be sure. You can be sure. The Bible promises. When Jesus comes in, he closes the door behind him. He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Sophie, if you've sincerely repented of your sins and asked to be saved in faith, then you're born again. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Are you sure about that? I'll show you. It's all over the Bible, but especially in the third chapter of John, and also in Revelation. Come on inside. See? Jesus said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And here. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I heard it, and now I see it for myself. This is all so amazing. To think that you don't have to doubt and wonder if you'll go to heaven. It's a done deal when you receive Christ. I've always been afraid of dying because I didn't know what happens after death. He was resurrected, and we are too. Free of fear. That's wonderful. You don't know how happy I am for you, Sophie. I just hope that Nick will be happy for me, too. How was your day, honey? Amazing and wonderful. How so? I've been listening to a radio preacher, and today I know for sure that I am saved. That's nice. What are you talking about? You've always gone to church and prayed to God. But I didn't know the Lord, Nick. I knew about him, but that's not enough. You have to be born again of God's Spirit. <sighs> Hope you're not becoming some kind of religious nut. I don't think so. I just know that for the first time in my life, I'm not afraid of death. 
We had been married only a few years then. Only a few years since Nick had given up the church where his parents attended to marry me. So it wasn't easy at home for a while. I didn't want to go out and party with him anymore. I kept growing in faith while he was standing still. You want me to babysit tonight? Why? I want to go to Bible study at church. Why can't you study the Bible at home? I do, but I'm learning so much more when I study with them, Nick. I'm afraid to ask what? I always knew that Jesus died on the cross, but I didn't realize there was no other way to save us. God put our sins and his judgment on Jesus, and he died in our place. I'm not afraid to die now because now I know that I'll go to heaven. I never doubted that, because you're a good person. Honey, no one is good enough, only Jesus. And I've learned that our goodness can never really satisfy God's holy standard. That's why Jesus had to die for us. That's crazy. What's the incentive to be good then? When you are born again of God's spirit, the desire to do good things becomes a part of you. Slicing it a little thin, don't you think? You can't earn your way to heaven. Jesus already earned it for us. Well, I'm glad you're not afraid of death. You know why? I have a reservation. A guaranteed place that Jesus paid for with his blood. Sophie, I think I liked you better before. When I was always afraid. Oh, Nick, how can you say that? You weren't always preaching at me. I'm sorry, honey. I don't mean to preach at you. I'm just so happy and I want you to be saved too. Why don't you come to church with me and see for yourself? No, thanks. I did that once for you. I'm not doing it again. I prayed so much for my husband, but he resisted every entreaty of mine. Then he had a serious accident, and I prayed that God would save him. He didn't die, but he didn't get saved either. He had a second accident, and his recovery was agonizing. Dear Lord, please don't let my husband die without coming to you for salvation. Speak to his heart, Father. Draw him to you. Bind the enemy that whispers doubt in his ears. Save him, Lord. Sophie, I'm so glad you're here. I've been here all the time, honey, praying for you. Thank you. The members of the church are praying for you, too. Thank them for me. Nick, Jesus loves you. I know. I know, Sophie. I can feel it. Through you. God wants to deal directly with your heart. I know you're hurting, but he's right here, and he wants to help you. All you have to do is ask him. I will. Nick had finally reached the end of himself, with nowhere to turn. And he professed faith in Christ. Then my faith. My proclamations were tested. I was hospitalized for surgery and not expected to live. Once I would have been terrified of that prospect. But having Christ in my heart made all the difference. Lord, if my work here is finished, then I'm ready. Take me home. Doing okay, honey? Yes. I'm okay. I was really worried about you. That I would die? I'm ready to go, honey. I know you are. I'm not ready to lose you. I guess God's not in a hurry to take me. I hope not. I prayed for you. But you're not out of the woods yet, Sophie. Whatever he decides is okay with me. God did restore me to health, and he always has work for his people to do. I began going to hospitals to tell people about his wonderful promises. Sophie, I haven't seen you since that night at the club. I heard about your illness, and I came by to pray for you. How thoughtful. After all God has done for me, so least I can do. Share his love with others. I didn't know you were religious. I'm not. But I know Jesus now. 
and he's made a big difference in my life. Remember how scared I used to be about death? I'll say. Now here I am, the one facing it. God gave me peace about death when he saved me. I was so thoughtless. Making fun of your fears. I'm sorry. You didn't know the truth. That Jesus makes us free. <laughs> it's scary, Sophie. I'm not ready to die. <laughs> oh, honey, listen. In John chapter 11, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Is that really true? Yes. I want to believe that. You can, because God said it and he can't lie. Repent of your sins right now and ask the Lord to save you, and he will. I'm living proof of that. Listening friend, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 promise that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You can pray anytime, anywhere, asking God to save you. He looks on the heart. If you need help in making this life-changing decision, we encourage you to call 1-888-NEED-HIM. Or you can get in touch with us here at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. The telephone number in Chicago, 312-492-9410. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website to learn more about this ministry, unshackled.org. Every week, Unshackled is heard in the 50 states and around the world on great radio stations like KAWN, Winslow, Arizona, and WSJA, York, Mississippi. To the listeners and station managers in these areas, we send a special thank you. We could not do what we do without you. And if you're listening right now on the radio, would you do us a favor? Radio stations determine which programs to air based on the amount of listener feedback they receive. So if you enjoy having our program on your local station, be sure to let your station manager know you're listening. It can be as simple as dropping them a line or giving them a call and thanking them for bringing you Unshackled. This is program number 3822, heard in the classic true story of a woman called Sophie, were Angela Morris, Patrick Thompson, Cheryl Galemo, Mark Forrest, and Tina Glushenko. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Patrick Thompson. Recording engineer, David Pierczynski. Audio engineer, Tim Lundeen. Script, Kenitha Gabler and Jack O'Dell. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Please write today or reach out to us on social media. Connecting with you means a great deal to us. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Unshackled PGM. And our address? Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. So, until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory reminding you that the doors to Pacific Garden Mission are open night and day. Thanks for listening, and may God bless you.